Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, thank you for subscribing and uh, watching my videos and liking and sharing and all the good stuff that really helps me out. Um, and it helps kind of get my video a little bit more out there. So I really, really appreciate that. Appreciate that. And I just wanted to say thank you. Um, secondly, I just want to say this video that I'm doing today. So this interview, it's incredibly special. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. So one of my friends reached out and um, she needed help with NHS interviews. And I realized that there weren't many videos out there with um, a direct tips and direct help. So this video is special in, in so many ways because this was recommended by a friend and I feel like I'm doing such a good thing and I feel so excited, like um, an excited little puppy because I feel like this will immensely help her and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So um, I hope you all enjoyed this video um, and I hope you all learned something as well. And I hope my friend really like, like she likes this and appreciates this. And I hope she learns a lot from this as well. So stay tuned, thank you. Hi, Stefan, how are you? I'm well, thank you, how are you? How are you keeping? I'm go doing good. I can't talk, but I'm doing very well. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much for joining me here today. How did you get into podiatry? Just to kind of... uh, so I had trouble when I was about what, 14, 15 myself, um, had uh, control of my shins and my right knee, if I remember correctly. And uh, remember, because I used to play a lot of rugby back in the day, and uh, kind of my physio, well, say my physio, the club physio basically kind of guided me towards seen a podiatrist and um, so I actually ended up going to Cardiff Met to actually get treatment myself <laughs> so that's kind of how I kind of fell into it so and um, I was kind of interested in that musculoskeletal side from that really so uh, yeah. yeah stuck with me really and then uh, <laughs> time came when you had to make your decisions in life and kind of went down this road <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That's actually quite that's one of the three common reasons people join podiatry it's either they have um, they've either seen one because they've had foot problems themselves or their parent is one or a friend of a friend um, yeah. is a podiatrist. So, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not really that surprised to hear that. Um, so, what, so was NHS your first port of call or did you join private practice when you graduated? Uh, so I you went straight to NHS, did go, my first interview, funny enough, was with a private practice, but didn't get that. Um, then it was just all NHS from there on. Mm -hmm. um, had a little bit of a hiatus from the NHS kind of last year um, as, as I went, buggered off to Australia, but <laughs> um, back in NHS. Not a bad place to go, really, <laughs> to be fair. I don't know if, uh, if I could be out there again, but uh, yeah, yeah no, I'm NHS all the way, pretty much. Uh, that's where I spent most of my career and where I am at the moment. Okay. Um, so because this interview is about NHS interviews and how to ace that, how did your first NHS interview go? If you don't um, mind me asking. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, I, I think I went okay. Um, I didn't get the job. Um, okay. I, I remember I remember it quite, quite well. Um, there was one, one question which basically... I wouldn't say ruined my chances, um, but it kind of made them choose someone else over me. Um, it was on kind of wound care, basically. Um, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the best when it comes to. I'll put my hands up to that. I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but it was, it was. I got the answer right, but it was more because they prompted me, and because they prompted me, that was kind of the the black mark. Oh. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was, it was a good experience. Um, yeah. So, I left with a lot from it. Um, I said it was quite nice. The feedback I got from it was quite nice as well. Um, it obviously, it can be a bit gutting knowing that it was just that prompt which kind of made you miss out on the job to someone else. But it yeah. is what kind of you learn from those experiences. And said <laughs> if someone asked me again, I, I said from that, I learned from that myself. So I kind of took that on for kind of um, the, the next interviews then. So yeah, <laughs> that's really good. Um, and that actually kind of leads us into our next question. From that interview, what did you learn from it, and what kind of tips do you think that students that are currently, um, they're going for NHS interviews at the moment, like what tips would you give them? Like what tips could they use? Uh, it's kind of, 
I wouldn't try and focus on one topic area because uh, essentially you're more than likely going to go for a band five post where it's quite general um, generalized. Um, there will be quite a heavy um, onus on kind of your diabetic and kind of wound care in that type of setting. Um, okay, okay. But kind of just have that um, <coughs> kind of that approach that anything can be um, asked of you. Um, so as long as you're you're kind of clued up on your foundation stuff, so how to um, kind of deal with a wound. Um, mm-hmm. kind of your, your basic musculoskeletal pathologies it's even down to the, the level of changing footwear looking at the footwear kind of down to that level um, you, I wouldn't say you, have, you do need a bit of detail but <laughs> so I think there is an expectation that you, you may miss one or two things um, I said from that first experience I, I think that the key thing was not to kind of stress out too much um, I think that's <laughs> That's really hard. That's really hard for students not to do. As I said, I, from that application, they know you're, you're you're just graduating. So it's kind of, in my head, I had that um, kind of attitude. It's kind of, yes, um, there may be a better person out there. I can just do the best I can as long as you're comfortable and you're confident with kind of what you know. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of stick to your gun back yourself in a way. Um, the worst thing you can do is try and kind of pretend that you know the answers and because you're just going to go down dig yourself a hole and I've been in those situations it's, <laughs> it's not nice. um, so kind of stick to what you say you've done on your um, cover um, your applications as well because um, they will pick up on that so if you've popped a little white lie here or there just have something to as an example um, so at least you can kind of back that up uh, in yeah, a way because yeah. um, again I've been picked up on one or two things where kind of when I when I got pop, put on the spot I was like oh no I shouldn't have put that oh no <laughs> um, <laughs> do you remember what that example was uh, that was actually from my last interview uh, no um, the interview for the current job I've got now um, <laughs> it, it was about um, kind of using 3d scanners for custom orthoses and <laughs> yeah, when I got picked up on that, and it kind of oh, was pretty good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I talked my way out of that one. <laughs> thankfully. I'm good. Okay, <laughs> so you're like quick thinking. You're quick on your feet. Then I wouldn't say you don't. You don't have to necessarily be quick thinking. That's the other thing I should probably kind of highlight is take some time to to think about the answer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say there's no rush, but don't kind of rush into the answer. So if someone asks you a question. Um, kind of don't say the first thing that comes to your head because again that's where those kind of whole situations come into come into play um take take a second kind of structure a, a form and answer in your head and then you can kind of be a bit more clear with that answer mm-hmm. um, so again kind of earlier like, uh, early me would have just gone straight into it and that's yeah. again, one thing I've taken on to all these uh, the, the later interviews I've had is just take take a couple of moments you you will know the answer or you'll know part of the answer. So just give what you know. Um, in a way, don't be too scared to put your hand up and say you don't know anymore because if that's the extent of your knowledge, that's the extent of your knowledge. Um, yeah. I mean, in kind of jobs I've been in, you learn on the job as well. So um, some of the feedback I have had, so my last one, my last interview was they were, they were actually um, happy that I admitted that I didn't know kind of how to do a certain thing as part of the job and said the training's there for you you'll have mentors so mm. as long as you're honest and again you, yeah. you're not trying to um kind of lie yourself into <laughs> or kind of get yourself you said you're going to get into a hole basically so yeah <laughs> just say what you know and kind of stick stick to that really right and um, for these interviews, are there any time constraints? Like how much time would you recommend that they sit and think about the answer? Because obviously you don't want to be sitting there for five minutes, just be like, oh, wait, I'm coming oh, up no, with an no. answer. It's kind of, you have the answer and it's kind of, oh, so you have the question. Um, and just take, take a couple of seconds. Um, okay. not, not a minute, but kind of a, a good amount of time just to kind of compose yourself as well. Mm. To kind of a couple of breaths and kind of crack on. Yeah. Um, that that time just gives yourself to settle as well, um, not only to kind of um, form a, um, an answer, but just to kind of <laughs> settle down the nerves. Mm. Don't be afraid to ask the question, um, to ask for the question again, 
because some of the questions can be quite long-winded and uh, you might not catch one or two things, but it sometimes can be quite important. So um, by all means, if if you didn't catch the question, ask again, but obviously three times a bit too much. So <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah. What about um, doing some homework on the trust that you're going into? Like, would you recommend that they um do some prior research to where they're going to be working maybe the demographic that's going to be in the area yeah certainly um so that's something i was quite fortunate when i was in uni we had some guy come in and kind of take us through kind of whole um, process from the actually writing the application to um doing kind of interview techniques and one of the key things he said is actually do a bit of background reading to even if it's private as well um yeah. kind of the, the core values and what the trusts are um kind of focusing on um you tend to find especially in Wales, Wales there are um kind of directives kind of government um, directives which each kind of health board have kind of put their own little kind of spin on things mm -hmm. so essentially a lot of it's kind of prudent health care putting people patients first taking pride in what you do that's kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> my health board's kind of little sayings um but you'll find that different health boards have probably similar things but kind of worded differently because mm -hmm. um, you'll get kind of your I mean, you probably would get kind of brownie points if you worded your answers to include those things um so for example if they asked you kind of um about a patient um care plan um for me it would be trying to put the patient first what do they want what do they expect um what bothers them as well um mm -hmm. so that kind of thing and then kind of formulate your plan around um what kind of the patient wants then because you are kind of um uh, formulate a, a plan with that patient center uh, care model essentially so, right. so just to have that kind of background uh, knowledge on kind of the, the health board's kind of directives really mm -hmm. um because you will be asked kind of questions which aren't haven't got those wordings but are kind of linked to those health board values as well so yeah, yeah. um what about um now, I've not really ever done an NHS, NHS interview, um, but would you, do they end up asking, um, like, at the end of the interview, like, do you have any questions for us? And if they do, what do you think students should kind of, what kind of questions should students be asking? Like, is there anything that, you know, they're afraid to ask um, with these, like, top, top interviews? Uh, to be honest, I, I'm not. I've never been one to ask too many questions at the end of the interviews. <laughs> I kind of, I say I'm quite kind of chilled, laid back when I go in. I was, yeah. oh, the last, I granted, the last interview was <laughs> too chill. Um, but it's kind of just how long would it, or when you would likely to find out? Because um, some people get back to you within the day. Um, if they've got quite a few applicants, it, it could be kind of the next day or the day after. So and that's kind of the main thing I really ask is how long or kind of when when do you expect to hear or when when should I expect a phone call? Because obviously mm -hmm. you don't have a missed phone call either. So, no, um, that's true. <laughs> if you, are, you want to be there for that phone call. Um, but yeah, that, that's all I really, really ask, to be honest. Um, okay. Unless you've got some burning desires. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's excellent. Um, do you have any final pieces of advice for students? Uh, as I said, I would probably get to interviews fairly early, um, kind of give yourself enough time. Um, I'm quite bad with getting places really early, so I'm there at least half hour before. Um, oh, just, God. <laughs> yeah, uh, save and work, I'm here the kind of an hour before I need to be. So um <laughs> it's kind of just getting there with enough time um just to settle settle the nerves um you can kind of take take it all in as well um mm. get a feel for the place yeah um, i would be wary of um kind of things going wrong as well um mm. so i'm not too sure with health boards in england but all my NHS jobs here in Wales, I've had to do an, um, a presentation. Um, and I remember the first two interviews that I've had, um, or I had, the, <laughs> all the software wasn't working. So the, the computers weren't kind of 
playing ball. Oh, so dear. I had memory stick in. Um, so I couldn't actually give the presentation as I'd like to. Um, mm -hmm. So you always have kind of like, like a little backup plan or know what you're speaking about if you have to give a presentation. Um, I remember the second time I actually kind of thought something like that would happen. So I actually had a load of printouts so I can give that to all the, the, the panel. Or give the, smart. Um, so it's kind of having those kind of little backup plans. And obviously, if that does happen, don't panic. Okay. <laughs> it's, if it happens, it's a, if it's happening to you, it'll probably happen to someone else. Um, fun enough, I knew quite a few people who were going for that one interview and it happened to all of them as well. So you're all going to be in the same boat. So it's yeah. <laughs> just just be nice and relaxed, nice and chill. Um, be aware that you're not going to be asked, they're not all going to be clinical questions either. Um, so you will have bits and bobs about kind of the, the health board, or, um, kind of their values. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, there, there are a couple of, they sometimes try and gauge you as a person as well uh, with some of the questions. Um, kind of what would you do in X um, situation? Um, and it's kind of things like that that they will be asking you as well. Um, so a prime example I've had is um, a patient complaint procedure. It's kind of, <laughs> you, you wouldn't necessarily know or be aware yeah. of that. But it's kind of what would you do in that process? So if someone came to you, or a patient came to you complaining of something, what, what steps would you do to try and rectify their problem? Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of having kind of a knowledge of what we, what you do. So uh, in all sense, per, per purposes, you kind of just escalate it. So um, you try and manage it yourself. If not, you just take it higher. Um, it's kind of those little bits and bobs which you don't necessarily think would come up in an interview. Yeah. yeah. But it's just something to, to be aware of, really. Um, so I'm trying to think of other <laughs> kind of random obscure. I said one of my last interviews as well, they were asking us about, um, uh, it was something to do with the NHS as a whole and kind of people misusing the NHS. And it was kind of one of those questions where you kind of, you would never have thought it would have come up in a kind of podiatry. That's um, a little bit awkward, isn't it? Yeah, that question. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit awkward so that was one of the ones where you just take a couple of seconds and yeah kind of, how would you improve the service what what, thing, what processes would you put in place mm -hmm. at, at the moment it's quite easy because not many people go to place like a and e so you're getting less people yeah. misusing services in that respect um but yeah they can throw a couple of little curveballs like that so don't expect all the questions to be purely clinical um right. expect kind of service type questions as well <laughs> so if they come up they're the one you're gonna to have to take a couple of little seconds just to chill chill out and just yeah it's logical thinking rational thinking mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to get the answer spot on but <laughs> if you do you've done a good, good job i suppose <laughs> yeah um that's actually really really good advice and i know some of my friends they will find that incredibly helpful so thank you so much um on to the second portion of this interview, which are the funnier questions. <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> I've tried thinking about some, but I might, I might be a letdown on these. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, so the first question is, what came first, the chicken or the egg? This is one I've been thinking about for years. Um, <laughs> I've always gone for the egg. Really? Yes. But then how did the egg come about? So you would have thought that we're talking evolutionary terms. Uh, you would have had your two almost chicken-like um, animals. Um, you would have had those mutations in kind of DNA um, between that kind of that inter, uh, not interracial, it's a, <laughs> um, <laughs> interspecies type of um, reproduction. And yeah. then, then you would have had the egg, which would have produced kind of the chicken. So you'd have had kind of the, kind of those chromosomes, all those kind of oh, features. All right. <laughs> okay. The egg, which included the the original chicken. So, you know, I'm gonna have to pass that on to my my lecturer because she always asks this question, um, not on purpose, just like um, it's like a redundant question, a rhetorical question. So you know, she doesn't really expect an answer, but I think I'm gonna say exactly this. I'm just gonna show her this video. Like this is this is my answer now. <laughs> You can stop asking that question. Um, next oh, question. Is there, <laughs> is there anything interesting your name spells with the letters rearranged? I, to be honest, I was, I've been trying to do that for the last couple of days. And <laughs> I just got those kind of 
kind of letters in my name which I just no I, I couldn't kind of give you an answer to that <laughs> fair enough um have you ever been mistaken for someone famous uh no but when I've recently kind of when I've had the the glasses on the Harry Potter thing comes out quite a bit which is oh, getting... no. <laughs> um I remember kind of when I was in college uh, I don't know who played Voldemort but he came up once or twice uh oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, don't uh, I, I don't know how to take that one. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, they just confused you for the actor, not the actual character, uh, though, right? Yeah, to, with the nose and everything. So <laughs> there you go. I, I would take that just as a compliment and move on. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, um, I've, been, I've been mistaken for other people, but I've never been mistaken for anybody famous. And anytime someone says like, oh, you, you remind me, like, there's a girl I saw that looks just like you. And I'm like. <laughs> Oh, thanks. I look, I look, I look like another person. This is, this is nice. I, w I could have gone the rest of my life not knowing that. <laughs> if well, they said someone you, like, sorry. Wait, wait till you're in practice and you get your old uh, granny oh. you know, saying you're, uh, you're looking like the grandchild and <laughs> a lot. You look, you look like just like my grandson and stuff like that. So that's oh. quite common. I mean, that's that's adorable. I, I would take that for sure. Um, <laughs> what's the strangest gift you've ever received? When I was younger, I've had a couple of kind of just diaries and kind of this when I was really young, where I don't have a rational use for a diary or kind of your <laughs> <laughs> or your um, phone books, kind of uh, not phone, but kind of your right, right uh, relatives number in a little diary right. and stuff like that. Um, recently, I have quite a cool one for our secret Santa ad, kind of I think they're called um, something bots. Um, they're like little sticky things and you can stick them on things and you can twist the arms around to in like different position. That was quite cool. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know I, what you're talking about. <laughs> I would, I want to know, I can't remember what they're called, but it's something bots at the end. And um, they're like little stick men, basically, on little bungees and they got kind of suckers, um, rubber suckers on the, <laughs> on the hands and the feet and they stick up against kind of... Um, on windows and stuff and you can like make a um, youtube videos out of them oh, i think they're called stick bots maybe right okay i i don't know the name but i think i know what you're talking about like you just fling it at things and it like no no it doesn't it's, stick okay. i wish i had one of those they're quite cool as well but no you have to like <laughs> they're like the rubber sucker things and you like stick them on you have to like physically stick it on rather than throw it on <laughs> okay all right we're moving on to the next question because you've like i don't know what to say <laughs> Um, what, what kind of reality show, um, would you appear in? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I've got the face for like your love islands and stuff. Probably like your big <laughs> brothers, to be honest. I'll be like that rogue guy who just does random stuff. In, <laughs> it's just this job. random guy in the corner. Like, what's his name? We don't know. He never says anything. <laughs> just one of those. Probably me. Or I'd be doing some random stuff, which, uh, <laughs> kind of would kind of freak people out a little bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be that kind of. I'd be off quite quickly, or I'd be kind of one of the last ones. I think I'd be one of those Marmite type guys <laughs> in those <laughs> situations. <laughs> Jesus, um, I don't know what reality show I'd be in. See, I don't, I don't really like reality TV. Um, I just, I just kind of like the the only reason I don't like it is because when I start watching it, I can't look away. Like it's kind of like looking at a train wreck. You just can't not look at it. Yeah, I, I know where you're going from. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, the uh, the Love Island, and that I was kind of dead against it. But I was in my ex at the time, and we only had one TV in the house, yeah. and kind of that was all that was on. So it kind of you kind of got hooked to it, and uh, yeah, you get like you get suckered into this, and then it's just like a downward spiral. Like it's they're so I don't know what it is about reality TV shows, but they can be quite addictive. I think. Yeah, so. and I think it's just like it's just because of how, how like dumb they are I'm sorry if I've offended anyone <laughs> no I think a lot of people are probably on the same uh, same same viewpoint as you <laughs> I hope so <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah anyways thank you so much for answering all my silly questions and giving us lots of advice I really really appreciate you taking the time out today um I hope you have a lovely evening and I will be in touch. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Goodbye. <laughs>